Yo, what's good, y'all? It's Decrypt back with another video, and today I'm gonna give you guys like a little updated strategy on what I use on a daily basis to trade the stock market. And it's gonna be way more simple than you guys might anticipate. I know a lot of you guys use all these different indicators. You're looking at supported resistance, trend lines, this and that, da da da. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to be looking for in order to take successful trades, right? So let's just look at Tesla here, for example, right? Even though on larger time frames like the 15 minute, 30 minute, you know, we're downtrending and price ended up breaking these previous highs, right? So like on smaller time frames, it might look like it broke previous highs. So it wants to push up, right? But you have to look back at the overall trend. We've been falling. Like Tesla's just like a you know, it's just been downtrending. You don't want to trade the upside when it's just, you know, straight dumping. You don't want to fight the trend, right? We ended up taking puts this morning, and I'm going to show you exactly why. Yes, we gapped up. Yes, it looked like it wanted to run up, but we didn't have a displacement. What is a displacement? A displacement, if you watched the Fair Valley Gap video, I highly recommend you guys go watch how to find proper Fair Valley Gap so you guys can understand. But on the upside, even though we broke previous highs on smaller time frames, we never had a displacement. Here, Price pumped up a little bit, ended up coming back down, and created a displacement there. That's how you know there's volume. There's sell side volume. Bunch of sellers, right? What we played was the gap fill. Boom. So if you don't know what a gap is, I always set my stop loss halfway through the displacement. And if I get a can of close above, then I'll get on my trade. In this case, we never got a candle close. We were down maybe six, seven percent until we started seeing profit. And then I just followed this gap, uh, gap fill there. And as you guys can see, uh, this trade actually did play out. Right. So, boom, the gap fill is basically just when price uh, or a gap happens when price moves overnight. So price jumped up overnight, pumped up a little bit and then just ended up coming back down. That's what the market uh, movers do. We call them MMs. That's what they do whenever they want to fake people out, right? Because overall, we've been downtrending like heavy. It's just been coming down, coming down, coming down, right? But what they'll do is they'll pump the market up a little bit, make everybody think it's going to go back up. So that way they can start buying up here and selling their positions to the people buying up here, right? So people like us, retail traders might think, oh, it's going back up. It's going to start going back up. And then they start selling it off to us that think it's going to keep going back up, right? That's what they do, right? But what we do is we don't predict the market. We don't, th we don't sit here and say, oh, I think it's going to go back up. I hope it goes back up. We don't hope trade. We play price action. So we make our decisions based off their moves, right? So in this case, price was going up, no displacement. I didn't like the trades there. And then price, you can see heavy volume. This candle just completely covers like one, two, three candles there and creates a displacement. So my entry would be in this area here of uh, that Fair Valley gap. And then my target would have been down here at the bottom of the gap. Obviously it played out all the way. We got out around down here for 15, 20%, nothing crazy, right? But that was just one trade. Let's look at SPY for example. A lot of people would not have traded this because we're still inside this four hour inside bar there, right? So it's like, it's just moving sideways. But even then you could still find, you know, small little scalps. When you're trading this strategy, you're not ne necessarily trying to find the big move. Sometimes you do get that big move, but not always are you gonna be in the trade fully. Because if it starts moving sideways and say, for example, you're trading an ETF like SPY, QQQ, uh, IWM, and it starts moving sideways, those zero DTE contracts are going to start getting burnt out because of theta, time decays. So the longer you hold those contracts, the more value they lose. So you don't always want to hold your contracts for like 30 minutes, an hour. After an hour, if you're not seeing profit, the trade's not going your way, it's just moving sideways, I would just cut it, take the loss, step away, come back tomorrow because the market's always going to be there. Uh, the game is not to, you know, try to get rich overnight. You have to preserve your money and be ready for the next day, right? You don't always wanna just 
keep trading, keep trading, keep trading, especially when you know the market's moving sideways. But even on a day like today, so the market opened up here, January 23rd, 8.30 in the morning, it was moving sideways. And then finally, boom, you get a move to the downside. One candle covers the whole morning, right? The whole previous morning, and it creates a displacement here. Now this displacement is pretty small, right? So my entry would have been inside here of this displacement. And because it's a lot smaller, my stop loss would have been above the displacement, right? So on smaller time frames, if we go here, if you guys watch the trend lines, how to find trends uh, video, you guys would know what an uptrend is. So you could just see it's like uptrending slowly, and then it ends up breaking previous lows off one candle. And then from here, you know, candle, uh, candle close above our stop loss would have got out. In this case, it never closed. And then you just target previous lows. I would have target, targeted this low here, 482.84, because this was a four hour inside bar. So it's a pretty strong low there. This was the the bottom of the inside bar there. 482.84, boom. So if, we go, if I go back into smaller time frames, there we go. So if you would have just got in here, you might have saw a little bit of drawdown. Zero, zero DTEs move a little bit quicker because uh, the Greeks are way more aggressive. But you know, if you're sized in, if you watch my proper risk management video, the reality of risk management, you would have never been scared if you were sized in properly, right? So let's put, let's put this, let's put it this way. I usually trade with like around 1,000 to 2,500 per trade, depending on what I'm trading. If I'm trading zero DTEs, I'll enter with a thousand dollars because if I enter with two twenty five hundred, um, then I will lose and I lose. I'm like down twenty twenty five percent drawdown up here. I'll be like, oh crap! I'm about to lose five hundred six hundred bucks. So I might be sitting there like, dang, like maybe I should cut it, right? I don't know if it's gonna keep going back up or down. You never know what the market's gonna give you, unless you're trading this strategy, right? Or I could just trade with a thousand dollars be down like 200, 250 bucks and be like, oh, okay, whatever. It's like, it's not that big of a loss for me. I might as well just let it play out. If I close out up here, I'll just take the, play the upside, wait for another displacement and then make my money back and more, right? If it doesn't go my way with proper risk management, I can take the trade again to the upside and make my money back, like I said, and more, All right? In this case, it ended up going your way. And I actually didn't take this trade, but I do see how it did play out even in a sideways market. So this is just like another example, right? So let's find more examples. Let's go to a day like yesterday. Let's see. So like Microsoft here, you can see price was moving sideways. This is the one minute, right? Price was moving sideways. It gapped up. It's been going up all week. People think it's going to keep coming, uh, keep going up, but you always got to read price action. In this case, you know, it tried to push up, came back down and the market just dumped right here, right? On this green candle here, you could have entered. And even on the sideways movement, you see that price isn't really pushing up. You could have entered right below that. Boom. Say so you stop above and then target previous lows, which would be somewhere down here. 395, you see this low down here? You just target previous lows. And that would have been your trade there, right? And these are all downside examples. All the upside examples are literally the same thing, but the opposite. So let me go find an upside example for you guys. Let me find a market open. And if you guys are wondering, I never trade, like if a fair valley gap was made yesterday, I would never trade that fair valley gap. I only trade intraday fair valley gap. So if the fair valley gap was made the same day I'm trading, then I, I will trade it. But if it's not made the same day I'm trading, like previous fair valley gaps, then I won't trade it. It's just um, a rule that I have. I 
I mean, really, I could just use like a larger time frame, fair value gap. Like in this case, let me clear all this up. SPY broke previous highs here on the weekly, made a one week fair value gap. We came back down and touched it and then boom. All right. So that would be more like a swing trade. But that's the, it's pretty much the same thing, larger time frame or smaller time frame. Uh, if you see the fair value gap in a bunch of volume, then it's going to be valid. But I mean, it's pretty much as simple as that. There's not really too much more to it. You guys don't see any indicators on my screen, no EMAs, no VWAP. I'm not saying they're not good to each their own. You know, I'm not the type of person to be like, hey, like, don't use this. It's not, it's not going to work. Just because I don't use it doesn't mean it's, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not like that. It's us versus the market. It's not us against each other. Um, as you guys know, it's like, even if it does work for you, it's just another thing to add to your arsenal. So like supply and demand, fair valley gaps. You know, if you have EMAs that help you indicate trend, eventually you won't even need those things. You know what I mean? But if they help you, they help you. And uh, I don't like, I'm not against it. You know what I mean? But it's really just as simple as that. There's nothing too crazy. Keep it simple, stupid is one of the best advice that I've ever got. If it's going to the top right corner of your screen, keep playing the upside. If it's going to the bottom right corner of your screen, keep playing the downside. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Super simple. I'm out of here. You guys take care, man.